ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Retro Warriors episode 354. Woo! As always, I'm your host, Justin Baker, and as always, I'm joined by resident old bastard, Chris Saturn. Hello. If we ever do the show in person again, uh-huh. you're going to laugh because of the, the, the air punching <laughs> I always do when we intro the show now. Yeah. And sometimes I do like karate chop hands. Nice. You know, uh, and, and so it's going to be hard not if, to. If I send you little semaphore flags, will you use those instead? I mean, obviously, yes. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna turn down semaphore flags, <laughs> which is not a phrase I thought that would ever come up on our show, literally ever. Um, housekeeping. Uh, we're 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 gonna have kind of a longer intro segment here. So if you do want to jump to the topic at hand uh, and don't want to hear me talking a lot about the Steam Deck, mm-hmm. then uh, hit the show description. There will be a a. Uh, thing a time stamp yes that's the word uh that that will tell you where to go so yeah um i i, I want to start the show by talking about the steam deck yeah because i received one mm-hmm. and i've been it's it's i was so excited for the steam deck yes and it is legitimately the most excited I've been for like a console since I, I don't know when. I was pretty stoked on the Switch. You were very stoked on the Switch. It's pretty stoked on the Switch. <laughs> um, I, I, I like before that. I mean, PSP maybe. No. You know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I. It's it in. I've had a little over a day. And it's genuinely been problematic in my life already. I have not showered. I've barely slept. I have like shirked all responsibilities. My family is like, are we going to have dinner? I'm like, oh, go away. Um, (laughs) Because I've been so, 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 so into this thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And I do want to talk about it on the show because uh, I've been spending most of my time setting it up as an emulation device. Yeah. And I want to talk about how I feel about the viability of it as an emulation machine, in addition to how I feel about it just kind of as a, a console, because for whatever reason, the games media is incapable of talking about this thing in a way that makes any amount of fucking sense. <laughs> Did you know that it could be used as a computer? <laughs> and I will give credit where credit is due. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the one review I watched that seemed... To honestly represent it was MKBHD, who's a big giant yes. uh, YouTuber um, that does tech reviews. Yeah. And he said something like, I wouldn't recommend this to most people, but the people I would recommend it to are going to absolutely love it. Yeah. And I would agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, I would not blanketly recommend this device to pretty much anyone that I didn't know. I'd be like, well, let's talk about how you feel about our Lord and Savior Linux. <laughs> and then we can talk about whether or not you think a Steam Deck is good for you. Right. Um, I want to start with my complaints, because if I don't get them out now, I will not come back to them because I'm, I, I don't give a shit about any of them. I'm too excited about everything else. <laughs> All right. So I want to just start with a big list of complaints. And first up, there's no USB-A. Right. Which is a little problematic. Um, I think that's really... I feel like no I don't, USB- I don't know how you say that's problematic. The MacBook hasn't had a USB-A in a little while now. <laughs> right, or a headphone jack. Right. It does have a headphone jack. Um, and, and really, hardware-wise, that's honestly my biggest gripe, is there, there's no USB-A. So plugging in anything requires a dongle, which is kind of a pain, unless you just have USB-C peripherals, which I guess right. maybe Apple users do. I don't know. Yeah. But I've, then if you're in I've a, got a, a USB-C hub that's got USB-A ports on it. I do as well. Yeah. Um, but just having to get that and then have that thing dangling, it's just it's just a little bit of a pain. That's fair. Um, I imagine heard, more things will be USB-C native going forward. True. Um, I'm hoping I've that already, anyway. I keep saying that for the last couple of years and I haven't seen it yet, but yeah. here's hoping. I've just bought a, a set of Bluetooth peripherals for it. Nice. So I'm just, just going to have its own keyboard and mouse. Um, I've heard people say totally the fan rational. is loud. Mm-hmm. And I, w- I will say it's a bit loud, but it's not overpowering, especially if you're used to using a laptop. Yeah. Um, I, I left it running last night, all night on, mm-hmm. and my wife and I slept right next to it with it right next to my bed. Totally fine. Like it didn't disrupt us at nice. all. Um, I, I would say it's probably quieter than, uh, uh, a lot of laptop fans. I guess the difference is it's kind of up in your face, mm. you know? Um, but yeah, I, uh, it's, it's noticeable, but I, I wouldn't call it like particularly loud. Mm. Um, the touch keyboard on it is a bit wonky. Uh, mm-hmm. In the era we are in of touch keyboards, yeah, 
I feel like it should be a little more responsive, a little snappier than it is. That's unfortunate. Um, I didn't know this going into it. Switching from handheld to desktop modes takes a minute. Okay. It doesn't just like exit Steam. It like closes down the Steam UI and switches to a desktop UI and closes whatever you have open to do so. No. Oh. Um, it really is like a full desktop environment shift. Hmm. Um, I thought it was going to be like entering and exiting big picture mode, which I right. guess makes sense because they're trying to squeeze every inch of performance they can out of this thing. And if you're running KDE Plasma underneath Steam, right. it's going to eat up a good amount of resources. That makes sense. And then I... <laughs> These are some specific to me issues. Uh-huh. Um, the way I've been playing games is I pull up a guide in big picture mode. And okay. then whenever I, I hit the Steam button to go back to the game and I can play for a bit, then when I hit the Steam button, it's back on my guide. Right. And the UI for the Steam Deck, the actual Steam Deck UI, because it has big picture mode if you just go to desktop mode, right. um, does not have that functionality. Hmm. You have to hit the Steam button and then go down and then go game and then go guides and then go back to the guide. And so that's a pretty big miss for me. Right. Um, which the one, means that whenever the one you could easily uh, get around by just having it on your phone or something, right? Or just playing it in desktop mode and doing big picture mode, and then right. I can just do it the same way I normally do. Um, USB C hub support has been spotty for me. Neither mm. of my USB C hubs will output HDMI from the deck, mm. um, so it is a little particular about outputting HDMI. Granted, mine are like the cheapest cheap knockoffs <laughs> of ever, right? Um, you cannot remove non-Steam games on in-home streaming. What? My desktop has all of my games from all of my launchers added to Steam yeah. as non-Steam game links. Right. And I have in-home streaming set up. Right. So my Steam Deck shows all of those non-Steam game links right. in my library because they're set up for streaming. Right. Right. And I don't want them because streaming non-Steam games via Steam in home streaming is kind of a spotty proposition. Well, then why do you have them in your Steam library on your, your computer? <laughs> because I play them on my computer. Well, the, and you, I, you can I play them Steam. without launching Steam. But know? I don't want to do that, Saturn. Oh, I want it all in one place. <laughs> um, and then finally, and this is, this is um, probably my most annoying complaint before I get into all of the gushing and amazing stuff. Uh-huh. There is no sleep or low power mode that allows downloads to continue. Oh, yeah, I did hear that in a review, yeah. <laughs> and of course, in my head, I'm like, well, it's a PC. When you put a PC to sleep, it doesn't keep downloading. Like, right. that's just not how this hardware is built to work. So I don't know how they would have circumvented that. They would have to put in a third special mode that you turn on that you're like, hey, I want low power download mode. You mean like every um, other console is done? Yeah. yeah, yeah, like every other console is done. Um, but what you can do is drop the TDP and underclock the GPU to the minimums while you leave it up, I guess. Um, really, I just disable auto sleep and I plug it in. I turned on all my downloads and I let them run. Uh, my, my Steam Deck has not turned off until I had to record the show. Like, it's just been on continuously <laughs> for 36 hours. Sounds about right. So those are really all of my complaints. Now I want to get into the good stuff. Um, the performance... Games. It does play games. The performance overlay and performance options on the Steam Deck are insane. It doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's a Steam game or not. You can hit the little uh, three dots button and you can turn on varying levels of performance overlays. I think it's it uses a software called Mango, I think it's called. Hmm. Um, and it gives you full specs on everything that's going on. It's got the TDP temperature, your FPS, no matter what you're running. Hmm. And it's really great for benchmarking, adjusting settings, because um, a lot of Steam, you know, it's it's a lower powered machine. So sometimes you're running a game and you're like, well, I want to turn down my settings to make this run better. But I only want to turn down the settings that actually make an impactful difference. Right. So you can leave that on and tweak video settings on the fly and see immediately how they're going to work. So you no um, longer need Digital Foundry anymore. <laughs> basically yeah <laughs> um i do love being able to change the tdp so like if i'm playing a super low spec game i can turn the tdp all the way down and maximize battery life which is just why doesn't everything have this why does why doesn't everything ever have this yeah um the manjaro do you, linux on do you want to do you want to take a moment to uh to spell out what tdp is for people who aren't <laughs> oh, major nerds um, uh, basically it's it's um 
it's the thermals. how much it, it's it's how it's the it's the ceiling for the thermals on your processor. It's yeah. it's it's how high it'll let it go. Um, basically, it's it's it makes it run lower and cooler, which takes less battery. Right. Linux on it is great. Manjaro with KDE Plasma, super snappy, nice. super quick. Um, there is and you're already, not a plas- you're not a KDE person. I've already. not run Plasma since it it looked like a shitty Matrix knockoff <laughs> um, in <laughs> 20 years ago. Right. Um, the SD card slot works great. Um, there's already an all-in-one emulation script called Emu Deck <laughs> that you can download that just auto installs all of the emulators and sets up controller configurations nice. for all of them automatically. And I've had really good luck running games on it. Nice. Um, I've run a handful of unsupported games. Um, if, if you're accustomed to the kind of little tweaks that kind of come along with PC gaming, then it's going to be pretty familiar. Um, but I, I've loaded up several fully unsupported games. Uh, Halo Master Chief Collection, Titan Quest, um, I, I think uh, Trails in the Sky. Mm-hmm. Uh, they say they're fully unsupported. I load them. I, I've played them. They work great yeah i have no issues no tweaking no anything nice um i have had some games that just don't run uh final fantasy 6 pixel remaster that just doesn't just doesn't boot that one's a weird one to me because some of the other pixel remasters are listed as deck verified i believe uh final fantasy 6 pixel remaster is as well really which is extra confusing yeah because it just doesn't boot for me huh um I love the controller customization. Uh, anyone that's used Steam Big Picture mode to customize the controller, uh, mm-hmm. it works, but it's really kind of like significantly more complex than it needs to be to the yeah. point that it can feel really confusing to make a controller config. And sometimes the, frustrating. Yeah, the UI they have for the actual deck controller config in the Steam UI mm-hmm. is is great. It's nice. super fast and easy to just set up exactly what you want, exactly how you want it. Um, and th- it it does have a sleep mode, and when you're in the actual deck UI, it works just like a switch. You hit the button, it goes to sleep. You turn it back on. You're in the middle of your game. Um, you can home button out and go back through all of the deck UI menus with the game still running in the background. Um, it's it's if I'll say that like if you're just buying this to play Steam games, and you happen to want to play a lot of games that are known to run well on the deck right then i think it is an extremely seamless experience for what it is nice now uh question about that yeah have you tested the whole thing about uh leaving a game in suspend on there and then trying to play it on your other computer i've not no what is the issue no i i've heard that that is you know working pretty well so i was just curious oh really your experience no i've i've not that i've not i've not done that i've not gone away from my deck (laughs) except (laughs) now tonight is (laughs) um so that that's just kind of um general complaints general good stuff um and 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 then i want to talk emulation um i will also say uh if you're doing emulation you're going to be in desktop mode a lot um, because y- you you just have to interact with Linux. I mean, you're just going to install right. emulators in Linux. Uh, they have a package manager called Discover. Um, and I like I just went in there and downloaded Switch emulator, Dolphin, Citra's in there, RetroArch is in there. Yeah, that's um, just the regular KDE package manager. Yeah, yeah. So you just go in there and you download whatever you want. Right. Um, I will say getting used to a new file manager is always a pain, and I feel like this is one of those things people forget about. <laughs> because they've used Windows or Mac for so long that it's been decades since they've had to get accustomed to a new file manager, <laughs> and man, it's—I forgot how much of a pain in the ass it is. I've got a—I've got a, a, a Kubuntu uh, VM running just so that I would be more familiar with KDE lately because I haven't used it in decades. So yeah. I am—I'm getting pretty familiar with that one. Yeah. Um, so what, what bugs me about it though, is that the name of their file manager is dolphin. Yes. I, I couldn't, <laughs> I kept trying to figure out why the fuck I was getting like dolphin air is doing stuff. Right. I'm like, I'm not in dolphin. Yeah. That's why. Like, uh, it's because well, they're, what do you mean a dolphin dolphin. window is open? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've tested a bunch of systems. I used emu deck to set up emulation station. Yeah. Um, I will say the whole process of running emu deck, it, 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 it revolves around. 
running bash scripts. Right. It involves moving files around. Um, I would say it's probably the same, like a little less difficult than like setting up a Raspberry Pi, mm-hmm. but definitely harder than just putting a, a folder of ROMs on your Windows machine. Right. Right. Now, if you're happy to just do a folder of ROMs and run RetroArch, that works fine. Um, no issues there. I did do the emulation station route and I wanted yeah. all my emulators, including PS3 and GameCube and everything else in it. Yeah. And it was a little complex to get running. And I had a couple of issues with like scripts that weren't running that I had to re-download different versions of standard Linux tinkering right. stuff. Um, and I've run a bunch of systems now. Um, all the eight and 16 bit stuff just runs flawless right. as you would imagine. Yeah. Handhelds run flawless. Dreamcast. Um, Runs great. Nice. Uh, Sega Saturn, I tested a few games that I know to emulate well on my Windows PC. They ran great. Nice. Uh, GameCube, the only GameCube game I tested was F-Zero GX, Mm -hmm. which is, in my experience, the absolute hardest GameCube game to emulate because it runs at a full 60 FPS, and if it dips for even a second, it's detrimental. Right. Um, And I did notice a couple of stutters, Mm. but it was very playable. And what that says to me is that virtually all other GameCube games are probably going to run fine in Dolphin on there. Nice. Uh, PS3 emulation. I ran 3D Dot Game Heroes, and it runs like a dream. Nice. I used Emu Deck to add it to my Steam library, complete with art and everything, and it just I just boot it straight from the Deck UI. And if you if I if if you had just handed me the Steam Deck and said, "Hey, play 3D Dot Game Heroes," I would not have even known. It wasn't a Steam version of the game. Aside from all the button prompts. Aside from the button prompts being wrong, right. obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um I and 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 it 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 just runs great. Uh, yeah. uh I've been, I'm, I'm I've very, been very about that. happy with our PCS three for a while now. It's oh it's great. Um which brings us to Yuzu, which is an a switch emulator. Right. Um hmm. <laughs> it it the 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 thing about Yuzu, uh-huh. and there's a couple. There, there's one called like Ryu Jinx, and people run stuff in Simu. Um, but Yuzu is is I feel like it's the most popular one. It's the one that I have that, that I've learned how to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, one, getting Switch emulation up and running is so easy. Yeah. I have a harder time getting Neo Geo running than I do Switch emulation. Weird. It is it is extremely easy. So all you need is one 12 kilobyte file, and then you can run retail games just fine. Hmm. And I tested a few games. I tested Fire Emblem Three Houses, uh, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, and Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. And the only one that really ran great was um, Mario 3D World. And that's the only one that has a perfect rating as far as like how good it runs on Yuzu's compatibility website. Yeah. Um, so I'll say like if you're getting it with the idea of like, oh, I'll just emulate Switch games and it'll be like a Switch. It's not there yet. Yeah. Um, I think it has the capability, but I think Yuzu is just too young. I think Switch emulation is just too immature, and I just think it's not really super duper an option yet. If only somebody made some other way to play Switch games on the go. If, I know. I have no idea. I, t- I told my <laughs> wife, I was like, look, Kirby's running. Now, granted, it's playable. You right. can play the game just fine, but yeah. it's just not running fantastic, you know? Um, I was like, look, I can play Kirby on the go. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't have to buy a Switch now. <laughs> she, she, uh, she rolled her eyes at that one. Yeah. Um, How many Switches are in your house? Two. Just okay. two. Just, right. <laughs> just the two. Okay. Um, but all this to say that what I wanted the Steam Deck to be was a Linux computer mm-hmm. that I could put all of my emulation stuff onto. Yeah. For playing for the show, yeah, have it on one con- one convenient place, and and uh, use that for when we play games for the show. Because then I can hook it up to my um, TV, you know, mm-hmm. via a dock. I can play with a controller. It's right. compatible with everything, and it also happens to run all my Steam games. Um, as far as the experience of getting it there, it has been some work. Yeah. Um, you can tell that a lot of the scripts and setups and software is still just a little immature Mm -hmm. um but i feel like this is one of those things where like a year from now it's going to be amazing let me ask you this yes Uh, how long till you think you accidentally break your kernel i (laughs) 
because we know, know how I, Linux tinkering works. I have stayed away from the command line. Uh huh. Um, Aside I've from installing of... shell uh, bash scripts. Well, uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I've stayed away from console. Uh huh. Um, everything that I can do via Discover, I have. Yeah. Um, and that seems to have helped a lot. Uh huh. Um, because I'm not doing anything too weird. I you mean, haven't answered today, my question yet, by the way. I, you know, I don't know, man. <laughs> All right. I, I, I will say that as far as, because um, normally when I spend 36 straight hours tinkering with Linux, it does get a little fucked. Yeah, by right? the time you're done, it no longer powers on. <laughs> um, but a lot of the things that you tinker with Linux, things like getting Samba shares set up appropriately, right. getting SD mounting set up appropriately, a lot of these little Little things that usually in Linux, you're like, oh, it doesn't quite work right. It doesn't yeah. mount to the right point. Oh, my Samba stuff is weird. I need to reconfigure right. my Samba demon, I whatever. Have, I have to install Indus wrapper for some reason, like yes. it's 2003. All of that yeah. stuff is already done and works. Right. Nice. And already is done and works specifically for your hardware. Totally fine. Out of the box. So a lot of the kind of Linux tinkering you normally have to do with a new install does right. not exist. Nice. And that's a very bizarre experience being a longtime <laughs> Linux user because right. norm, normally Linux is never custom made for your hardware. Right. Yeah, we, it, that's not how Linux works. We, we had ordered one custom Ubuntu machine from Dell. <clears throat> and uh, when it arrived and I powered it up and it was Ubuntu, but it was all working and specifically designed <laughs> for that laptop yeah. and knew all of the hotkeys, I was like... I don't, I don't know what's going on right now. Yeah, Bluetooth just works. Wi-Fi just right. works. It just it just all, all the normal stuff you'd expect from a PC just works. So I'll say this: like if you're if you've never used Linux, it, it'll still feel you might feel like it's kind of rough. You'd be like, this is kind of weird and rough, and I don't quite understand. If you're a Linux user, you're gonna be like, oh my god, this is the <laughs> seamless Linux I've ever used in now, my life. Now let this me ask incredible. you this: if you're yeah. not a Linux user. And you're just buying it to play Steam games and nothing else. What I would say uh -huh. is look at your list of games. If a good amount of stuff you want to play is already deck verified and you're just going to always stay in the deck UI, that's all you're going to ever be in. Right. Then I think it's a it's a buy. Uh, honestly, nice. um, it, it, now would you uh, would you still get the the full uh, uh, 256 gig model or 512 whatever the high end mo model is or would you say go with a smaller one and an SD card uh, I think it depends on the games you want to play I, I would honestly like now that I have the SD card installed because I got the 512 with the screen and the right, case right. and then you know all the fancies yeah. um, I've got it stacked up with some pretty big games I've got Witcher 3 on there I've got No Man's Sky I've got Halo Master Chief Collection with like four different games downloaded in right. it and I've got a 400 gig SD card that I want to say cost me 50 bucks. Yeah. Um, and I still have plenty of space. I've got a couple hundred gigs of like ROMs and disk images and stuff like that. And I've still got space to spare. Now that said, you didn't put I have, Doom 2016 on there immediately? I've not yet, no. Weird. I've not yet. That just no. seemed like one of those games that you would have put on there first. <laughs> I will say that some of the features. Or, uh, that I didn't think I would care about, mm -hmm. I care a lot about. Yeah. Like, one, the trackpads are great. Nice. Um, I'm starting to get used to using them in first-person shooter games because I think they're better than the than using the joysticks. And the joysticks themselves are very nice joysticks. Yeah. Also, the touch joysticks is something I thought I wouldn't give a shit about, and I do. Oh, I've used this? this uh, so it knows when you're touching the joysticks. They're capacitive. Oh, okay weird so in like for example crimson clover mm -hmm. uh i made it so that if i'm touching the left joystick it f r rapid fires my weapon hmm. which is nice i don't have to hold the weapon button down now it took that away from me and if i let go of the stick it stops firing hmm. but why would you stop firing yeah i made it so that in halo whenever i'm touching the right stick it turns on low, like a very low sensitivity motion aiming, hmm. so I can fine adjust my aiming while I'm stick aiming. So when I'm when I'm moving hmm. my reticle to a target, and you know sometimes when you're aiming with a joystick, you get close, but you're off by like an inch, and then you kind of overcorrect. Yeah. Now I can get up there and I'm off by an inch, and I can just move my hands a little bit and motion onto my target. I act like I I know what you mean by that, but when I play <laughs> any FPS with a, an analog stick, I'm yeah. just all over the goddamn place. I'm nowhere near an inch. So, um, so it's 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 uh, I really like the features. Ergonomically, um, less comfortable than my Split Pad Pro. Mm -hmm. 
Um, more comfortable than I probably thought it would be. Um, what I what it really seems to be doing with the ergonomics is it seems to be accommodating multiple grips. Because I will say this, the controls do feel a little high up. And I know this was a right. concern a lot of us had in the Discord. It was, yes. hey, these controls are like at the top edge. Yes. It doesn't feel uncomfortable, but it definitely feels a little high. Definitely. When, the first time you put hands on it, you're like, yeah, this just feels kind of like a little jacked up there. Right. Um, but I realized what it wants to do is accommodate multiple grips. Because if you're playing, let's say you're playing an FPS game and you're using um, the touchpad. Right. You know, the tuned touchpad with like motion on the right side, you're going to, you're going to grip that farther down. Right. And then maybe use the back paddles and, and the way they have the controls positioned, all grips feel okay. Mm. Nothing feels amazing. Cause it's just kind of big and it's just kind of heavy. Right. Um, but every grip I've tried and I've tried a lot of different control schemes and stuff, weird shit. Mm -hmm. Um, it I all feels, that. it all, <laughs> it all feels <laughs> relatively comfortable. Yeah. Um, which I think is kind of what they were going for. I would, I would call it a win. Um, it is a little heavy, yeah. uh, size wise. It is almost identical to the size of my split pad pro on my switch, which is the only way I play my switch. So right. size wise, it feels the same, but it's definitely, definitely heavier. Yeah. And thicker um, too, right? I think it's a little thicker. I mean, the controllers are thicker for mm -hmm. sure. Um, what is nice is they sit up enough off the table to get proper airflow in the back. And nice. even in the case, like if you just laid in the case, it still sits up off the back of the case enough nice. to still suck in air through the That's back good. fan. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, overall, I, I've had an amazing time with it. Yeah. Um, but I also think I was pretty realistic about the limitations and what it was from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It is a Linux PC with specialized game support from Valve. Right. The game's... The support for the games is more wide and and compatible than I expected it to be. Right. Um, but it's not perfect. Yeah. And I think if you want it to be anything other than a Linux PC, then you either need to only play Steam Deck verified games in the Deck UI, mm. or maybe you know uh, prepare to have some of your expectations not get met with it. I, I wonder how well, because we, we know that the highest end model sold out real quick, right? Yes. And Valve has come out and said that it, it outsold all the other models by a huge margin. Right. My question is, I wonder how well it will sell going forward beyond that dedicated core group that pre-ordered it. Cause now, I, I was reading an interview with... Um, Gabe Newell right. in the newest issue of PC Gamer, mm -hmm. and he was basically like, this is selling astronomically better than we even expected. Right. Yeah, I saw a similar uh, video interview with him where he said the same. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I think if you're kind of on the fence because you're like, well, I'm not really a tinkerer, but I like the idea of PC gaming on the go, then give it a year. Yeah. And it'll be there. Right. It's already gotten there so fast just from when it launched a few months ago to when it came into my hands that complaints I've been seeing for months now are already gone. Nice. A lot of them. Um, I think if you don't mind the tinkering or maybe if you're like, hey, I set up emulation dev devices all the time. I get all the Android emulation devices. I'm looking for the next step, the big real deal emulation device, and you don't mind tinkering in Linux. It's fantastic. Yeah. Nice. It's great, and and it's it's only getting better. Um, I mean, it, it's like the, like I'm getting software updates j just like scattershot constantly. Hmm. And Steam software updates, individual software updates. Uh, Dolphin wants to update things. You know, Manjaro updates. It's all being updated so fast, so rapidly. Well, I wonder how much of that is just because it's those first couple days you have it though. <laughs> Also, well, I, I mean, the first thing I did was get everything updated and install all my software. They, they, sometimes I'll install software, and within an hour, there's another update hmm. that has just been pushed. And I it has happened on multiple different software pieces. I wonder if it's just staggering updates to you so that it didn't just front-load them. Po well, you know, then it shouldn't have front-loaded as much as it did. Yeah. Because well. it was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. Well, with your internet connection, any amount is a lot. Yeah, that's true. So I, I, I do think it's it's very compelling for me right now i mean really i just want a pc that i can do emulation on that also does some some mild pc gaming um and it 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 delivers on that it, nice. it's exactly what i wanted it to be um 
I, you know, I have my pain points with it, uh, yeah. but a lot of them are stuff where it's like, oh, well, either this almost works and I know someone will figure it out pretty soon because obviously they're working on it. Um, or it's one of those things that like so many other Linux things is just going to take more effort from me. Right. You know, um, but the idea like my ideal use case for this thing mm -hmm. is and we talked about this in the discord is. I love having my laptop with me. I always want to have a computer with me right. all, all the time. Yeah, same here. And the idea that I could bring my Steam Deck and a keyboard and suddenly I have a fully functioning computer with Discord and Firefox and everything. Right. Um, but also a gaming device at the same time yeah. is super exciting. And I don't have to carry a big, giant, awful gaming laptop because let's, let's be honest, gaming laptops, are they're just kind of awful. I love it. I love how uh, giant and massive and useless they are. I can't. Oh, man. Clunkers. Anyway, that's a half hour on yeah. the Steam Deck. <laughs> so so hopefully that was interesting. Yeah, um, it, uh, I'm, I'm, it does. I'm like. It does yeah. solidify my, my, uh, my, it makes me feel better about the fact that I didn't jump in on yeah. it. Because I thought, I, I, I yeah. thought about it a lot. And, uh, but honestly, I just don't see a use case for me personally i don't yeah i don't see one for you either one you don't love handhelds i really don't uh two I especially don't know, love heavy handhelds yeah two you don't mind tinkering to get something working but right. then you want it to work yes you know and three you've already got many many options within your home that right do everything you need yeah so i yeah i for someone like you like if you're already like gaming at a gaming pc all day long i i, I don't you know i get it you know, you're already at a pc right you know for me my pc is upstairs in the corner of my second story of my house and i struggle because i don't want to be up there all the time away right. from my family and away from natural light <laughs> and stuff right um which is why i have steam links all over my house yeah so this is basically replacing this it's in home the streaming. portable steam link yes that yeah. that run I, oh i will also say i tried xcloud in yeah. edge yeah um runs okay does not see a controller so oh, that no. uh can't figure that out Ugh. but uh we'll see we'll see how That's that goes and and i have not and do not plan to install windows because after watching videos on it performance appears to be worse Oof. in games on windows that's no good which is presumably maybe a driver issue or maybe I, steam stuff be, is just yeah. optimized enough i don't know maybe i don't know anyway that's my week. Well, that's your you, day and a half. What have you been doing? Yeah, really a day and a half. What have you been doing, Saturn? So uh, mine's going to be much more brief. Um, so I, I've been playing uh, uh, Final Fantasy 1 on Windows Phone. <laughs> Saturn. So while you've been experiencing the Steam Deck. <laughs> Why? So they're shutting off the achievements for it in a month or so. And I decided that I want to get this one fucking achievement. For, oh my God. for their stupid sliding puzzle in Final Fantasy 1. You know, I do feel a little better because I feel like <laughs> I get made fun of a lot of like, Justin, why do you fucking need this extravagant yeah. thing? This this rope and pulley Rube Goldberg computer well, this was situation free. you've crafted. I paid nothing for this. Okay, well, you, you all got to rub that in. <laughs> all right. But then you're always over here like, well... You know, I booted up the Atari version of Pac-Man yeah. <laughs> so that I could see. You know. <laughs> so, so I've uh, I've I've put in 255 attempts at the stupid 15 sliding puzzle, and I can't yeah. fucking get it under half a minute. But I'm still trying. someday, yeah. someday I'll do it. Anyway, uh, I did uh, pick up a game on Steam called uh, Epiphany City that I saw advertised. Uh, by some random dude on Reddit who was like, I just put five years of my life into making this and and uh, this is what it looks like. Please play it, yeah. Yeah, and, and he wasn't even like, he didn't even mention what game it was, how much it cost or where you could buy it. It was just <laughs> a little video. He was like, this is the thing that I made and I'm so proud that I was able to publish it. And right. and it looked neat enough that I went into the comments to be like, what what game is this? And, and all the comments were like, that does look cool. And it was just him saying, thanks. And and I finally get like thirty comments deep, and somebody's finally like, uh, "This is the name of the game. I found it through a reverse image search, and this is the Steam link." And the yeah. guy responded with, "Well, I didn't want to make it look like I was advertising." <laughs> and I was like, "Motherfucker! Now I have to buy it." Um, but it was it was cheap anyway, and and yeah. it's uh, it's just a fun little puzzle game. Uh, it's it's basically uh, just you. 
uh, it's an overhead. You you walk around and you you pick up and rotate or move things in order to uh, create new objects out of them. Are you trying to not say Sokoban so that I don't make fun of it's it? It's not exact because you don't push anything. <laughs> So it's obviously not Sokoban. I but see. It, but okay. it definitely has a similar feel, but it's more like uh, Sokoban paint by numbers. Okay. Um, so you would hate it. But yeah, I really I enjoyed it. I already hate it. Uh, it, it. Also, it's really short. I think the whole game took me like three hours, somewhere around there. Yeah. And uh, one thing I will say is... The first thing that you see when you turn it on, which would again turn you away from it to where you would never even touch it, is the first thing that you see is a message from the developer that says, uh, we're going to front load a bunch of story at you, but don't worry because the game's going to happen once we get this story out of the way. Oh, and then no. it's like 25 straight minutes of just dialogue. Wow. Uh, and walking around. And then once you get past that, it's a really charming game and I really enjoyed it. So uh, you would hate it. But for mm-hmm. people out there yeah. who don't immediately think that they would hate this, it is really cute and fun. Uh, and I think it was like less than five or ten bucks somewhere in that area. So I want that to be on the Steam page for <laughs> for people out there that don't think they would totally hate it. It's fun and it's less than five dollars. <laughs> but no, I did enjoy it. Uh, and and so uh, props to uh, the team that made it. Anyway, yeah. Um, also, I uh, was digging through my Xbox. So I was in that weird in between games phase. Uh, after I had uh, double finished Nier and was trying mm-hmm. to find something to play. And I was just digging through my Xbox and I found Omega 5, which was a game that I bought many years ago. And I yeah. barely tried it out. And I realized as I was looking at its icon in my Xbox that I don't remember what genre it is. <laughs> so that clearly shows how much of an impression it left on me. Right. So I decided to load it up and it's a shmup. And, uh, oh, cool. It is, uh, it's made by Natsume Atari. And uh, published by Hudson. Uh, So it's clearly made many years ago because Hudson doesn't exist. Right. Uh, And uh, and I was uh, playing it's a twin stick shmup uh, where you use the right stick to fire. Uh, So Uh so kind of like Robotron. Geometry Wars style, yeah. yeah. Uh, Only it plays like a horizontal scrolling shmup. Um, Okay. You just happen to aim with the right analog stick and fire with the right analog stick. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have a life bar, which is good because, uh, some of the attacks are a little unfair that you can't see them very well because the screen is a little busy. Uh, but, uh, but it was, it was fun. Uh, it was, uh, it first, it felt very difficult, but once I actually was able to tell what was supposed to be a projectile, uh, I, I found that it wasn't too bad and I was, I was making some progress and as I was playing it, I was like, maybe, Maybe other people would enjoy this and I should recommend it. And then I looked it up and it's been delisted for like two years. <laughs> uh, so you can't buy it. So sorry if anybody wanted to try it. Sorry. I, I love that you didn't lead with that information. <laughs> you just talked it up and then I'm like, oh, yeah, that sounds kind of fun. Yeah. Like, you, know, you can't have it. No, no, it's so, gone. Hey, bye. You can pirate it, I guess. If you got a hacked 360, go, go pirate it. But uh, if you want to play it on a Series X like I am, sucks to suck. Let's... <laughs> Let's do the news. All right. Uh, first up, Sony, Lego, and Epic Games have announced a new metaverse for kids. Well, that's the worst sentence I've ever heard. Uh, they I, they have a name for it. It's called Predatortopia. <laughs> it's going to be great. Or Predatopia for short. Or, or Club Penguin 2. Oh, God. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who the fuck uh, not only thinks we want more metaverse, but thinks we want it for our children. God. I don't mm. even want my kid to go on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Much less a meta. If my, if my daughter was like, daddy, can I go to the metaverse? I'd be like, you can never go in the metaverse. <laughs> what if, what if the people behind Lego and Fortnite made it though? That makes me want it less. <laughs> that just lets me know that it's going to be uh, full of advertisements and expensive as fuck. Yeah. That's what that means. Yeah. Uh, Square Enix trademarks <laughs> Tactics Ogre Reborn. Please, please be a remake with that new 2D or, oh, yeah. 3D engine the, thing. The HD 2D. Yeah, oh, uh, please be that. Uh, however, you had just said uh, predatory and expensive and then immediately said Square Enix. So that leads me to think that it's probably just that. 
because that yeah. is, that does seem more their style now. They they do seem to be more and more making games that are for people who don't play games to have fun. Was that how they phrased it? Yeah, they don't don't have fun with it. Yeah, uh, did you, did you play to earn? Did you see the the headline this morning about Babylon's Fall had less than ten simultaneous <laughs> users or something? The idea that Square Enix could publish a game and it has less than ten users is just asinine to yeah. me. Yeah, it's they're one of the biggest and, publishers in the and, world, and it's developed by by Platinum. <laughs> uh, so the the gameplay should at least be fun. I read an article somewhere that was like, here are other platinum games you can play that yeah. aren't this one. <laughs> uh, yeah. New prints of 3DS games are showing up in stores in Europe. Yeah. So get your hands on them while you can. It's right? probably the last last dip into that Seriously. well. Seriously. Uh, Chrono Cross, Final Fantasy VI, and other PS1 games are being reported as expired by PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 3 systems due to error with timestamps. Oh, wow, this timestamp error is causing systems to not work properly. That's never happened yeah. to Sony. Yeah. Sounds it, so strange. Right, yeah, it says that the games expired uh, in 1969. Oh. Yeah. Well, then, obviously, they're very expired. Yes. So. Don't, don't play those. Right. Uh, oh, man, they're ripe. GameStop is canceling Amico pre-orders. No! Oh, God, Tommy Tallarico, no! No, my Amico. I was going to play Cornhole. <laughs> <laughs> every time I forget that Cornhole is a game on it, and every time is it a funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cornhole's great. I just wish I could play it on the couch. <laughs> well, you can if you move it inside, or I could buy an Intellivision Amico. Yeah, yeah, I could move it inside, but what if I wanted to play it with an iPod? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I feel like you're just making dumb shit up now because you but, don't want to play cornhole with but me. But I don't want to throw an iPod because then it'll break. <laughs> I really do, and I want to have a user interface that looks like it was made to show off a fake Windows operating system that was never created in the early 2000s. <laughs> And I want a video game composer in expensive <laughs> jeans to sell it to me, and then we can play cornhole. What if the user interface looked like Microsoft Bob if it was made in 2003? <laughs> oh, Amico. Oh, it's dying so slow. <laughs> Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp is a bad name and is released to exactly one user due to a preload error. I didn't realize how bad that name was, so I said it out loud again. Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. Yes. Um, yeah, a preload error gave the game to one person. Yeah. Well, they, they, I mean, they paid for it. They, right, right, right. They give it to them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I assume they got to keep it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, they, they had preloaded it because they had preordered it back before it was removed for pre-order. And uh, when the original release, well, the second original release date passed, it happened yeah. to unlock on their system. How uh, nice and, of them. And that person has two switches, and they said it only unlocked on the one of them and not the other. Weird. Yeah. Um, Steam Deck coverage shows the gaming journalists have no <laughs> idea what PCs are yeah. or how they function. Yeah. Um, ETA Prime on YouTube managed to get 4K60 output yes. by connecting a GPU a desktop GPU to an M.2 PCIe slot yeah. inside the deck. Yeah. And every outlet has covered it. Right. All of them. Yeah. Even though they seem to have no fucking idea <laughs> that of course you can do that. Right. You sh you probably don't want to cuz you have to have an external power supply and graphics card right. connected to it. Yes. And it is no and a, longer And a mobile. string of converters to plug it into a M.2 slot. Steam Deck news coverage has been just abysmal. Yeah, it's been hilarious. I mean, just bad. Yeah, it's. it's I, I saw. It's proven I saw to someone, me how little all of these outlets actually know about what they're covering. I saw one outlet uh, that was like, "How to install Windows," and it was like, "Don't, because it voids your warranty." Right. And I'm like, "Is that why Valve provides Windows drivers?" Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. It is a computer. Yeah. Um. Sony and Nintendo are changing their policies regarding online subscriptions in reaction to European laws, which yeah. makes it the first European law they've ever respected. <laughs> well, uh, this so was that's nice. This is what three, four weeks after Microsoft did this. Yep. Uh, and now yep. Sony and Nintendo. Uh, did you see how they're doing it though? No, I knew that it was the thing where if you've not used a thing, it won't auto renew. Right. So Sony is changing it to where it will automatically turn off auto renew, which is basically the same way that Microsoft is doing it. Also, right. uh, in the past. Uh, in all regions, if you paid for additional PlayStation Plus, it would turn on auto-renew, regardless of whether or not you told it to do so. 
Right. And now it will stop doing that, at least in Europe. And maybe in other regions, they haven't decided. Uh, Nintendo, the only change they are doing is they are not turning it on by default. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's I, <laughs> yeah nintendo needs to hire like a business manager no no you know like someone to just like come in and be like hey this is how you run a fucking business <laughs> nintendo no no they're not gonna uh, do that uh interesting fact um i can uh uh run the super mario 3d all-stars on my steam deck <laughs> uh, even though nintendo won't sell me a copy it's true uh, piracy is wrong etc etc yeah. i did too yeah. but i'm not gonna play it on my yeah. switch in, in spite <laughs> um and finally frank safaldi reveals that all prototypes submitted to wada go through him first yeah. and that he gets to digitize them and write up an analysis which will begin releasing now so th- i don't think i didn't think i'd ever say this but good on wada right uh for running it through the and, vghf and seriously uh if if they really wanted a valid uh, uh, ranking or grading or whatever for a prototype, what better person to send it to? I know that's that's really the it's it's as if that 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 pawn star pawn stars is that the pawn shop show? Yeah, that's the pawn shop. show. Okay, it's like that guy saying, "All right, I think I have an expert on this." This guy down the street. Only then it's Frank Cifaldi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, um, but the, I, I love the, that the that, protos that, that they did show off already are really neat looking. Yeah, um, I'm excited to see what comes out of it. I really want to see what's on that Silent Hill 2 prototype. I'm so excited mm-hmm. about that. Uh, and that brings us to the topic at hand. A mere 46 minutes into the show. Yeah, you didn't Good. think we'd ever make it, and here we are, listener. We did. <laughs> we we made it. Anyway, that's the topic. show. We got. See you later. Uh, we're doing play this, not that. Yes, uh, which is not the name of a game show, but it should be. <laughs> it should actually. Um, yeah. And 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 the the idea of play this not that is one that I've brought up many times on after hours and we've never made it a show but now we will and we have the padding of the Steam Deck yeah. so that we don't feel pressured. <laughs> um, basically, it's it's uh, um, you know the sad thing is now that we are actually starting the episode now that we are seconds away from actually playing it I've yeah. I've realized uh, would it work better as don't play this play that um. Man, eh, I don't know. I like play this, not that. All right. It feels snappier, right? Okay. Snappier. Let's let's workshop this right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, stop playing all those lame, played out, popular games and play these instead. Yeah, that's that's what we're doing here. <laughs> um, they, 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 this is not just uh, these are better games list, much right. as it is just a pile of alternatives. Some of them are just more modern or complete experiences in the same vein of the original title while others are just great experiences that offer more of what you probably already loved. Yeah, and a lot of it is just, uh, there's a good chance that if it is that game that you love, you've played so much of it that you could recite it to everybody. And maybe you just want something new that feels like that, but that you don't already know back and forth. Right, right. Um, So I want to start with um, my first pick, which is play Titan Quest, not Diablo. Yeah. Um, Titan Quest. Uh, I I got Titan Quest when it came out in 2006. Yeah. Um, I felt like I was the only person that was excited about it because I was really into like uh, Greek mythology at the time. And also, you were and the it, only person really excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> and I came out and I was like, hell yes, Titan Quest. Mm-hmm. And I bought it. And for years, I was like, hey man, Diablo is great, but have you played Titan Quest? Uh, it's fantastic. So it came out in 06 on, um, windows. It was published by, uh, THQ developed by iron lore entertainment. Mm -hmm. You might have heard of it in recent years for a few reasons. One of them being that grim Dawn used the same engine. Hmm. And what I love about Titan quest is the way you build your character in it is, is it's a little slower, but it's much more granular. You feel like you have a lot more options, um, and it's it's Greek myth. It's Diablo, but Greek. It's just yeah. a lot of fun. It's really well done. Um, it, it's it's not quite as at least it wasn't back then as polished feeling as something like Diablo two with expansions. Mm-hmm. But it's just a really good action RPG, and it came out in a time where there for some reason were not a ton of them. Mm. And I still feel like it's kind of an underserved genre. Um, the the genre of Diablo clones. I mean, at any given time, there's two or three puttering around uh which is bizarre to me because it's such a extremely popular game diablo is i mean yeah. 
Um, but what's wonderful about Titan Quest is they're still working on it. <laughs> um, the the anniversary edition came out in 2016. It has released on iOS and Android. The Android port is good. Nice. Um, it's on PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch. I've heard the Switch port is meh. Hmm. And it runs on deck. Totally fine, even though it's unsupported. I saw it popped up on GeForce Now when I was looking at that <laughs> earlier today. Yeah. Um, and they, they came out with an expansion uh, uh, back when it was, you know, new uh, a year later called mm-hmm. Immortal Throne, mm-hmm. um, which added some cool stuff. And then they came out with an expansion in 2017 <laughs> uh, called Ragnarok, which is 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 Norse themed. Yeah. And then in 2019, they came out with Titan Quest Atlantis. Hmm. And then in 2021, <laughs> they came out with Titan Quest Eternal Embers, which I've not played, but it looks like it's sort of like um, uh, uh, Asian themed. Hmm. So at this point, I mean, uh, they've added full controller support. It works great with controllers. Nice. Um, and at this point, it's just a, a very good uh, <laughs> long term developed multiple expansion packs spanning different aesthetics action rpg i feel like at this point it just does more nice. than a lot of other action rpgs that were not quite this expansive nice. um it's a lot of fun online works great it's low spec because it came out in 2006 <laughs> um and and if you had the original version on steam then when they came out with a remastered they just gave you the remastered version yeah i think i got uh, it through a humble bundle at some point yeah so just all around a great great action rpg uh that i i cannot recommend enough yeah. and and by extension grim dawn is also another great newer alternative to uh diablo if you're looking for uh on a good action rpg nice what do you got uh my first one uh that i have to i'm under obligation to give <laughs> is uh uh play dragon quest monsters not pokemon make me oh i will I'm going to yell that for all of your picks. That's what <laughs> I've, I've, I've yet to play a single Dragon really? Quest Monsters game. Oh, Not one. Why? I don't know. I have no what idea. What's wrong um, with you? I, I don't know. I, <laughs> a lot of things. Um, but specifically what's causing this symptom, I don't know. I couldn't no, tell you. No, they're, they're, they're solid. Uh, they were all developed by Tose, uh, published by either Enix or Square Enix, between 98 and 2019 uh, on various Nintendo handhelds. They're always on Nintendo handhelds. Um, and, and it's, it's like Pokemon, but it's got mm-hmm. extra depth to it. Uh, it does borrow a lot of mechanics from the greater Dragon Quest series. Uh, several of the mechanics in Dragon Quest monsters like breeding were later introduced into the Pokemon series as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, it, it so hold the, on with, mm-hmm. with, with, with uh, the first Dragon Quest monsters was 98. So yeah, was that, was that before Pokemon gold and silver? Yes. Oh, yeah. So it did have breeding first. Yes. Mm. Um, and there's there's a, a pretty big list of uh, uh, monsters that you can breed up to as well. So you could theoretically start with like uh, a Drachy and a Chimera and breed them with so many different monsters until you eventually end up with the final boss of Dragon Quest three. Oh, so th- when you breed them, you get different monsters. Correct. Because in Pokemon, when you breed two Pokemon, you get one of the two Pokemon you were breeding. Yeah, and you might get that, but if you breed certain monsters together, you will get something different. And yeah. you'll the, the See, first that's exciting to me. Yeah, the first that parent little monster ranchery. Right, the first parent that you choose determines what family the new uh, monster will be in. Like if mm-hmm. you choose a slime and a bird, then. Uh, you'll get a slime family enemy that also is bird. And so you'll probably get a winged slime. Yeah. And, you know, things like that. And there's, I think there was already 270 something monsters in just the first one. And it was all enemies from the first, uh, I believe, six Dragon Quest games. Because I don't think seven was out just yet. Yeah. Um, and And they've just gone on from there. Uh, and also right. from the very first game, you could have a party of three monsters versus three monsters because, uh, yeah. you know, it's just the Dragon Quest battle system. It, it occurs to me in Pokemon, you have to breed the same Pokemon together to get an offspring. But in my head, I was thinking about Ditto because I don't I'm sure you don't know how mm. breeding Pokemon works. I don't. Um, if a, a Ditto can be any Pokemon, mm. so you can breed a Ditto with anything and you get whatever you bred the Ditto with. Just like in real life. 
Yeah. Um, so basically, everyone that breeds Pokemon has this weird amorphous <laughs> pink blob that fucks all of their other Pokemon. Yeah. And that's its entire job. <laughs> it's so. It's the father. <laughs> <laughs> this is the father of pokemon yeah um i want to try a dragon quest monsters I, you, yeah. you've talked about it a lot and mm-hmm. i've still yet to play one yeah um the the oldest on ones on game boy color are pretty dated i mean they're game boy color games um but all the later games i think still hold up pretty well especially if you look at like the ones on ds and 3ds uh those yeah. hold up really well uh, i would say uh and they're fun they're, they're fun little games um, my next pick is Play Luminase, not Tetris. Because those are totally the same game. They are the same game sets. Falling Blocks. Falling oh. Block puzzle games. Okay. You know, I, okay. I considered uh, putting either Dr. Mario or Puzzle Fighter on this list or Paneled yeah. Upon and listing it as not Tetris. And on each yeah. one, I was like, eh, that might be just different enough and scratched it out. Uh, Luminase is, is, I mean, Tetris is wonderful. Yeah. But I, I, we've all played Tetris to death. True. Um, that won't stop me from playing it more. Right. But when I sit down and I'm like, hey, I want to just play a quick puzzle game. It's definitely Tetris. But then Luminase is also pretty far up there. Yeah. Of just like, I'm going to kill 20 minutes. Um, Luminase came out originally on uh, uh, PSP? PSP. It was a 2004. It was put out by Q Entertainment, which is um, uh, Tetsuya Mizuguchi's company. Yep. And it's just a, a really fun, good, rhythmic puzzle game. I think we did an episode on it. Yeah, we did. did. We we did, or did we just do Mizuguchi and we? No, we, just we did Luminous. Yeah, uh, Luminous. Go listen to our episode on it. It's it's just really fun, good falling block puzzle game. Um, that that like times all of your movements to the music yeah. in the game. It's just fun. Like oh, if yeah. you if you really like if what you like out of Tetris is that kind of trance like yeah, zen. Just, yeah, the Zill. I mean, if you're like a competitive Tetris player or whatever, you're, <laughs> you're probably not going to find that here. No. Um, but if you just want to zone out and play a falling block puzzle game and listen to some music, then Luminase is that oh, yeah, all absolutely. over. And it's it's great. Yeah. yeah. What's yours? Uh, so uh, I'm going to say play Military Madness and not Advance Wars. Which... Sell me on Military Madness. So Because I've struggled. Really? Okay. So yeah. um, I find it very hard. It can be. Um, it depends on which one you're playing, because there's been several of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the first one... Obviously the WiiWare one. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Um, so, yeah, the first one was uh, developed and published by Hudson on the TurboGrafx back in 1989. Uh, and there mm-hmm. were sequels throughout the 90s and a couple in the 2000s, like the WiiWare one. Um, <laughs> Just the way you said it. Ugh. This is so much hatred in your... The Wii Wear one. Actually, if you want the Wii Wear one, it's still on Xbox. It was not delisted like Omega 5 was. I think I own it on Xbox <laughs> and Wii. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's basically Advance Wars in the future on a hex grid mm-hmm. is the, the short version. Um, so it... The, the game borrowed heavily from the the first Famicom Wars games way back before there was Advance Wars. Um, and uh, the earliest missions are probably harder than the rest of the game mm-hmm. because it doesn't it doesn't give you the ability to gain any additional troops in those first missions. So you're just stuck yeah. with a limited number of units. So you kind of have to do the, the same pitfall that advance wars falls in where you have to go the way that they kind of intended, or at least close to it, or you will get overrun. Right. Um, so unfortunately what should be the tutorial ends up being the hardest part of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does, it, it gets into a groove, uh, as long as you're not playing, uh, the, the PS one game, which never gets into a groove. Yeah. Um, but uh, apparently they did pretty well at it because Nintendo hired them to make the later Game Boy game, uh, Game Boy Wars games, uh, mm-hmm. because of their experience making uh, Nectaris. Um, so uh, if if you haven't played, uh, it, it, a lot of the Military Madness games are also called Nectaris, by the way. Uh, if you haven't played any of them yet, and you are a big Advance Wars fan, I do say at least try uh, Military Madness or Nectaris or one of them. Uh, because it is, it feels just a little different. It takes itself more seriously than Advance Wars, which is my biggest complaint with it. Yeah, uh, I think I I played a bit of the TG sixteen one, and it mm-hmm. felt a little dry. Yeah, that's that's my biggest complaint. Is I would like yeah. a little more of the whimsy that Advance Wars has. Yeah, Advance Wars like you you almost feel like you're playing with toys in yeah. your backyard, right? Like little army men. Yeah. 
Um, my next pick is uh, play Guilty Gear, not Street Fighter. Oh, hold on now. And, yeah, I know. I'm I'm going but, there. All but right. I thought I should play Blaze Blue, not Guilty Gear. Well, okay. I uh, <laughs> see. Now it's a tough choice. Um, uh, the Guilty Gear games are are they're just awesome fighting games yes. inspired by like goofy anime tropes and heavy metal. Yeah, and that's what they're really into is goofy anime yeah. and heavy metal. And they're fun and they're ridiculous. Uh, they do tend to be quite a bit more complex than uh, Capcom fighters. Yeah. But they do offer a ton of depth and really cool characters. I did put some time into learning. Specifically, the one I would recommend is Guilty Gear XRD. That's XRD. Mm. Um, specifically, Guilty Gear XRD Revelator. Because <laughs> they all have names like this. Yeah, I think the last one that I played much of was Double uh, X. Yeah. Um, but but uh, um, they, they, they have a lot of depth. And there is a little bit of kind of learning the flow of each character. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was thinking about it and it feels more complicated than street fighter. I think what it is, is more specifically street fighter has these character archetypes, right? right? And it's only got like a handful of different types of characters. And when you're looking at street fighter two specifically, it also is filled with character stereotypes. Also that, <laughs> uh, and this certainly has stereotypes, but they're fun, dumb anime stereotypes, right. not um, maybe kind of racist <laughs> ones. <laughs> a little. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, really, I think it's just that they have so many more different types of characters in big rosters that yeah. all the characters are so different. Because in Street Fighter, you're like, oh, I learned Ryu. Now I can play Dan and Ken and Akuma and right. Goken and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what I really love about XR Revelator, mm-hmm. which is the next to newest one, the newest one is Strive, mm-hmm. um, is that it offers a simple input mode. Hmm. And uh, uh, this is the thing Arc Systems Works has been doing. They did it in Dragon Ball Fighter Z, um, where it auto combos. Hmm. And at first blush, it sounds like the kind of thing that would sort of, it's like playing a game with invincibility on it, takes all the challenge out, but it really doesn't. Hmm. Um, you still have to to block and time your strikes and move around the arena and, and you still play the game, yeah. but it just makes it so that if you hit an attack button and it hits, then you hit that same button again and it goes into the combo. That sounds much better than the simple mode that Capcom games tried in the late 90s and early 2000s. It's honestly really fun. Nice. Um, Killer Instinct also has a s- simple input mode. It's kind of a thing in fighting games now. Nice. Um, but I really like the one in Guilty Gear. Um, I, I'm my daughter plays me in Guilty Gear. Nice. She plays a uh, Chompkin, and uh, she does the simple input mode, and it's nice. it's just simple enough that she can have a good time, and I can have a good time. And the just the just the notion <laughs> that it is a tournament fighting game, yeah, and a 32 year old grown man and a six year old can play together <laughs> and both have a really good fun time. Nice. That's, that's not something street fighter right. offers yeah. period ever. It just doesn't No. Um, and so and, I, I highly unless, recommend unless neither of them have ever played a video game before. Then possibly then street yes. fighter might <laughs> offer that. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend guilty gear XR revelator and nice. all the guilty Gear games, guilty gear games are just all the ones I've played. Uh, there's like 25 of them and blaze. Um, are all really fun. Blaze Blue, uh, <laughs> I really like the first Blaze Blue, and then it got a little fan servicey to oh, the I didn't, point I didn't that play after the first one, yeah, the sexualization reached a point that mm. I didn't feel super comfortable playing it. Guilty Gear has a little bit of it because it's anime inspired, but right. it never feels like gross. That's something. Blaze Blue had some characters in the later games, and I'm like, yeah, dude, that feels gross. Nah, that's unfortunate. So yeah, maybe that's just me and where I am. That was my problem with Skullgirls too. Um, I just got that in a bundle and was going to play it and it's, then just didn't. Yeah, it's, it's fun. A little but too sexy. Sometimes. It, it, uh-huh. yeah, I, I didn't peg it for that. Yeah, sometimes. Anyway, um, yeah, my next one is going to be play Bloodstained and not Castlevania. Oh my God. You're telling people to not play Castlevania? Yeah. Oh my God. Just like you told people to not play Street Fighter. <laughs> And Tetris. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm realizing why we haven't done this topic. Yeah. It makes this sound like we're shitting on all these (laughs) great games. Yeah. That's what I was saying. We should have done don't play this, play that. Yeah. Then we could phrase it as when you're tired of it, don't play this. Anyway. No, I'm sticking to it. Play Luminates, not Tetris. (laughs) So, yeah. All right. So, uh, Bloodstain. Developed by Artplay and or NT Creates, depending on the game. Uh, And and it's... 
it's Castlevania and it's any kind of Castlevania, whichever one you want it to be. If you want it to be a classic eight bit Castlevania, they've got bloodstained curse of the moon, which is Mm -hmm. as close to eight bit Castlevania as I've played in anything. Uh, the, both of them are, are very good and absolutely worth playing. And in the second one, you can play as a Corgi in a mech suit. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's a buy, right? I don't know how a game can be better than that. Yeah. I I mean, we haven't made one yet. Right. And then, (laughs) and then there's ritual of the night, which is your symphony of the night style Castlevania game as bloodstained. Uh, and, uh, obviously it has the same director as Symphony of the Night as well, uh, uh, Koji Igarashi, which was the whole selling point of it before it came out. So it kind of feels like cheating, but, uh, Bloodstained is still getting updates. They just released a new character for it, uh, oh, wow. last week and they are still, uh, uh, more updates coming for this first game and they are already working on a sequel, but they want to get more free content available in the first one. Uh, and there is a ton of free content that has been released after the game's original release. So uh, if you haven't played it since release, you might check it out because it's got a, a randomizer mode in it now. It has multiple playable characters. Uh, there's a lot going on there. Yeah. Um, my next one is uh, Play Rune Factory, not Harvest Moon. What about Story of Seasons? <laughs> play Rune Factory, not harvest moon which is now called story of seasons um here here, here. yeah i am um i guess kind of infamous as being on record as not loving stardew valley yeah um and i don't even totally know why um i just don't love the pixel art in it all right um and and for whatever reason the aesthetic of rune factory feels more evocative of what Harvest Moon wants to do. Because I started on Back to Nature on, on PS1. It, Harvest Moon has always been a 3D game to me. All right. Well, not 3D, but... Right. Polygonal. 3D. M- po- yeah, there you go. Polygonal. Yeah. Um, and uh, I specifically played Room Factory 4, um, which came out in 2012 and just got a, a special new version on Steam and Switch. And then mm-hmm. Room Factory 5 uh, came out in, in last year, I believe. Um, and it's pretty much it's Harvest Moon, yeah, but a little more fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you talk to a dragon regularly, right. you know, a lot more fantasy. Um, involved. except they put an entire really fun RPG in it. Yeah. So Harvest Moon um has always kind of had like mining and stuff, mm-hmm. and a lot of the Harvest Moon kind of inspired games uh uh kind of took that. Like Stardew Valley has a mine that you can go in, go down different levels, and it's kind of dungeony and you fight monsters. Right. Um Rune Factory is just straight up like, no, it's a full RPG. Yeah. We've got levels, we've got bosses, we've got gear that you that you take with you. Um, and it just marries that with uh planting turnips. And then when they grow, you throw them in a box. See, and then my JRPGs, when you plant turnips, uh, it's hell. And you have to wait (laughs) real life days for them to grow. Yeah, no, see, it's not quite that bad. Um, But Rune Rune Factory 4 just, uh, uh, when it came out in in 2012, it just perfectly hit that Harvest Moon sweet spot for me. Mm -hmm. And I felt like other games that were trying to do that life sim farming thing were not. Um, and I still maintain that that I like their formula better than I like um, the Story of Seasons formula, which is just keep doing exactly this. Right. And granted, um, they're both the same developer, too. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, uh, Rune Factory 4. I've not played 5 yet, and I have not played the older ones. I've mm. only played 4, and I do highly recommend it, uh, nice. either on uh, uh, 3DS or on Steam or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's just a blast, and, and I, have, I have a really good time with it. Nice. And I like farming turnips. I'm, uh, I'm going to get weird with this one. Okay. Uh, because I realized at some point uh, that I don't think I've discussed this game on the show before, and I need to. It's important. So okay. Yeah, gonna, I saw this in the list and I was like, what the fuck is any of this? So I'm going to tell you to play Escape Goat instead of Solomon's Key or Toki Tori or Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Yeah. And none of these are games you're going to play. So um, you can. I liked. I played Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't want to play it again, but yeah. I did. So these are your old 
arcade style single screen puzzle platformers kind of mm-hmm. um the uh, solomon's key being kind of a, a perfect example of it because a scapegoat is basically what solomon's key would be if it had modern design sensibility Mm -hmm. Uh, so it is a single screen puzzle platform game it does use retro style graphics it's got a good sense of humor Uh, you play as a goat trying to get out of a dungeon because that's what goats do of course Um, uh, he was uh, sentenced to uh, rot away in this dungeon for being a witch because you know goats they do that Uh, goat witch is very common thing it's a thing You, you have goats you know how it is and uh, you find a uh, a magic mouse friend who. Uh, God, I can... wish I had goat witches. <laughs> <laughs> the best. It's it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's dumb and it's funny and it's great. Uh, if you if you like uh, those old arcade style uh, puzzle platform games, there is a free version that you can still play at playescapegoat.com. <laughs> and if you decide you like it. You can then buy it on Steam. There's two of them now. They made a sequel, but they sadly haven't made another one since 2014. Uh, the developer is this guy uh, or this company or something that goes by Magical Time Bean. Uh, I don't remember how I found the game, but I love it, and I still go back and play Escape Goat from time to time, Yeah, and I recommend that everybody else play it as well. Yeah. Uh, I did forget that the first Rune Factory was just called Rune Factory, a fantasy harvest moon. Yeah, yeah it was a spinoff. I, I forgot. Yeah. They also did a sci-fi one. What was that one called? Oh, um, what was that one called? Uh, yeah, I remember it being on PSP and it was not nearly as popular. Yeah, it was. And um, it's in, in I, th- I want to say it had a harvest moon in the title. It was, oh God, what was that? Um, uh, in, uh, innocent Life. Innocent Life, a it? futuristic harvest moon. Yes, because they're like, what do we do with Harvest Moon? And they're like, I don't know, make other games and put Harvest Moon in the title. <laughs> uh, my final pick is play Saints Row the Third, not Grand Theft Auto V. Yes. Which, and I will. Which we mentioned last episode. We talked last episode. I will say up front if you are exclusively after the online version of GTA, hmm. then you might be a bit disappointed with right. Saints Row. Yeah. Um, but if you just like playing single player and trucking around and shooting things and having fun, yes. then, then Saints Row 3 is a much more enjoyable, accessible, and most importantly, I, I feel like there needs to be a phrase bigger and more dramatic than over the top. Bombastic. I mean, it, it it's it's within seconds of starting the game, you're exploding out of a jet firing machine guns yes. in the air right. and karate kicking people off of motorcycles. Yes. I mean, it's just, it's just and, so... And you left out the best part is you jump out of a, a jet without a parachute, fall yes. into the same jet, fly all the way through it, come out the cockpit, grab a parachute, and then survive. This is literally the opening scene. Yes. It's like they took all of the most ridiculous action from every Die Hard movie mm-hmm. and said, what if a game was just literally all of that? But stupider. Just way stupider. <laughs> it's just a really great, easy to play, open world sandbox game with carjacking and i wrote gunned but it meant to it was supposed to say guns <laughs> it's got a it bunch got of gun in there <laughs> got them guns i got some gunned up in it um the they, they did come out with a remastered version which i've played yes. which is uh, uh really good mm-hmm. it's on ps4 xbox one it's on stadia yeah it's on switch uh, as well it's on luna yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, chances are if you buy bundles of games and stuff, you probably already own it. Yes. Um, but it's just a blast. And what I love is that Saints Row the Third really retains the arcade feel of mm-hmm. older GTA. You've still got your open world sandbox game with progression and story right. and blah, 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 blah. That's all there. But it also has these like arcade challenges yeah. peppered all throughout, like Professor Genki's, <laughs> uh, uh, whatever. Uh, fun, uh, murder time, fun time. Murder time. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's got little tank challenges you can go do. Like, it's just, it has that arcade feel. Yeah. And it marries it with this, this logical progression from early GTA to now, if it decided to, that they didn't want to be serious at right. all. And, uh, and, and if you, great. if you do go through the story, the story is also ridiculous. Oh and, yeah, and, uh, it's the best kind of totally stupid. And and there are sequels to it. There are two. Um, the uh, Saints Row Four is uh, the same, but what if 
superheroes in the Matrix. And it's all right. It's fine. Yeah. The Saints are the four, fourth, the, the Saints four, are four foot forward. Um, <laughs> it's it, just it, called four. <laughs> whatever. Um, what I, what I disliked about it mm-hmm. is, um, because you had superpowers, yeah. it removed the reliance on, on vehicles, guns and cars. Yeah. And the fun of these games for me is guns and cars. Yeah. And then there was uh God out of hell. Yeah. Which is, uh uh saints row the third but in hell and also you have um supernatural powers Mm -hmm. so it's it's basically saints row four but uh, instead of technological powers it's it's more supernatural powers and yeah uh, uh, yeah really saints row the third is the it is the the pinnacle yeah it's right there and i think that they didn't they announce a new one that's like they did and, uh, and it doesn't look. Um, I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> f- I'm a little concerned. I'm a, little, a little nervous about this yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a little worried that it's. Uh, I'm worried know. it's going to take itself too seriously because the first two Saints Rows also kind of took themselves a little too seriously. Oh, kind of. Yeah. The first two Saints Rows were crazy serious. Yeah. Uh, and then they just had it so that when you got hit, you ragdolled everywhere. So right. it was fucking funny. Yeah. But yeah, was Saints Row the second Saints Row the one where you could do insurance scams? Uh, the third has that. Okay, maybe it's maybe it's in both. I just I remember it being in the second. It one. It might also well. be in the second one. I might have not gotten that far in the second one, uh, but in yeah. the third, you definitely can do the insurance scams. And I was I got really good at making sure that I would get hit and then bounce high enough that I could just bounce off the roofs of like four <laughs> different cars, and then they would all get charged for it. It was great. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, what's your final pick? Uh, I'm going to go with Liquid Kids. Uh, Excuse me? Which is also a game I have not mentioned enough on this show. So play Liquid yeah. Kids, not New Zealand Story or Rainbow Islands. But also, I feel like we're getting this new version of Saturn with these <laughs> weird games I've never heard about. I Every now and then I'm, I just think, you know, I haven't talked about that on the show. What dumb excuse can I come up with to talk about that on the show? Yeah. And uh, I finally have an excuse to talk about Liquid Kids. So um, if you've not played Rainbow Islands or New Zealand Story, go play those as well. So uh, this was uh, developed and published by Taito back in 1990. So if you haven't played uh, New Zealand Story or Rainbow Islands, uh, basically Taito started making these weird arcade platformers that are all the same game. But with a different gimmick. And Rainbow mm-hmm. Islands was you attack enemies with rainbows. And then Parasol right. Stars was you attack enemies with parasols. You don't say. And the New Zealand story uh, was instead you're a kiwi with a bow and arrow. <laughs> and so it got weird. And then you get to Liquid Kids where you play a platypus that the game for some reason refers to as a hippopotamus. <laughs> but he is a platypus you can tell you can look at him it's a platypus were they on drugs at taito yes <laughs> and his name is hippopo and he has to save his girlfriend and he does what? so by throwing water at things so that's your weapon now instead his name of is hippopo the platypus yes but they keep saying that he's a hippopotamus they're wrong you maybe look he at just him. identifies as a hippopotamus he might i don't they're being i didn't ask him you know, I didn't. Uh, but if you look at him, he's a platypus, uh, and he yeah. throws bubbles of water at things, and that's that's the game. You throw water at things, and they die, and it sounds dumb, but it's adorable, and it's fun, and all of those Taito platformers are just dumb, silly, arcadey platformer fun, uh, and this is one of them, and it does it well, and it's the last one that they made, so... Uh, it, one, I don't think it gets as much attention as the others, but two, I think it's made better than the others. Like, I think they yeah. had finally gotten the engine to where it had just enough depth that it was a little more of a game, but not so much that it's like a, a console platform experience. It's not a Mario or yeah. a Mega Man. It's still that arcadey style where it's short stages uh, it feels like it's trying to push score at you, even though it doesn't do anything. There's constantly free score items raining from the sky, just like in Bubble Bubble. So uh, it's it's right, but silly. Th- that's how I get my dopamine hit Saturn. Exactly. I gotta pick them up. There's it's just constantly throwing candy at you, and it's it's dumb and it's silly and it's great. 
we're coming up in the end of the show, so I, I can derail us. Um, yeah. My daughter just spent the last week and a half uh-huh. at school yeah. learning about exclusively hippopotamuses. Oh. No other animal. I thought it was like an animal week and we'll learn about these animals. Yeah. No, 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 no. Just hippos. Well, they I painted a giant hippo. They wrote a story about hippos. They made hippo masks. They nice. made hippo dioramas. Nice. Just literally hippo. And I'm like, why did these, why do six year olds need this much hippo knowledge? Well, she knows everything about hippos. Now your six year old is an expert on hippos. You should show her a picture of hippopo and she will tell you that's not what a hippopotamus looks like. Oh, she will definitely tell me. Yes. She's very well versed. She's an expert. Uh, one other quick honorable mention I'll mention, just because uh, I probably should have put it in the proper show, is uh, Newtopia. If you haven't played Newtopia and you really like the very first Legend of Zelda, uh, Newtopia is that. Uh, just oh, slightly man, I weaker. I put Newtopia in there. Yeah. And I forgot. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do we have any other... Quick mentions, um, Grim Dawn is a good alternative to Diablo. Um, I, I've been told that Metal Slug is a good alternative to Contra. I don't know that they're that similar, but... Uh, I don't I don't know why you would play Contra when Metal Slug is on the table. Right. I just, I'm confused by that entire sentence. So a, um, a lot of the ones that I thought of, I was like, well, that's so obvious. Certainly we've probably covered this a thousand times. Yeah. Yeah, this was kind of a tough topic. Yeah. I, I liked doing it. Yes. Um, but yeah, it was a little... Uh, I'm little just glad I got a chance to talk about a scapegoat. <laughs> and liquid kids. And liquid kids. Which makes no... S- our small hippopotamus, our baby hippopotamus is called kids? I don't know. Our you should ask your daughter. Kids? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go wake her up. We'll get her on the show. <laughs> hey, tell me about hippos. <laughs> um, That'll be the bonus content for this episode. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, we, we did also kind of want to put in a, a sort of, uh, uh, call to action. Yeah. Um, if you know of any good alternatives to games that we should be playing, yes, please come to our discord and tell us, send us a message on Patreon or Facebook or whatever. Yeah. We're always after, um, because we were just complaining about this, the, the, the other show, mm-hmm. um, we, on our Infernax episode, I, yeah. we were like, we want more Castlevania two clones. There have to be some, where are they? Right. Um, because I, in, in Saturn, I, I feel like you kind of do it the same way where you'll get in a mood for a genre yes, and you just want a lot of that genre. And what it turns into is you play the best of that genre first, because yeah. that's what you have and you're right. excited about. And then you're like, well, I could play these other ones, but they're not as good. I just wish <laughs> I had more good entries in this genre. Right. Um, also just cause instead of GTA five, just cause mm-hmm. three and four, both very fun. Yeah. And you get to grappling hook people, yes. uh, which is super fun. You can grappling hook people to each other. You can grappling hook a dog to a car that's driving by, or yeah. a car to a building, or two people together. Um, you know, I own great. Just Cause 3 and 4, and every time I try to play them, I don't get anywhere, but then I'll instead just watch a video online of people just grappling hooking people to each other. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. That yeah, looks great. It's so much fun. <laughs> uh, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, it, it has a ton of verticality because you can yeah, grappling hook. Right. So you can jump off of a mountain. And use like your wingsuit to fly around and grappling hook onto a passing helicopter and get in it and just start killing other helicopters. <laughs> and you can grappling hook it to a car and then get out and then watch it land on the car a mile down the road and smash it. It's just, it's just great. I don't think it's the kind of thing you would stick with, but no. if you like dumb physics sandbox games, oh, it's good. Yeah, it's good stuff. And you know what else is good stuff? I've, Our uh, Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> at patreon.com slash retro warriors i was gonna say good stuff show. is your segues yeah yeah <laughs> so guy said i did a good one last you episode. did it's a good one not this one <laughs> not as good as this one but you know what? what is good our patreon patreon.com slash retro warriors yeah. you get uncut versions of this show you get talking wizards it's a fun time we talk about mcgriddles and uh peeing and it's just great um mummies lots of mummies <laughs> we we price how much it costs to get mummified these days <laughs> um uh how much uh turns about uh, about 10 to 20 grand oh that's uh that's um, not bad more than you want to play pay less than you'd expect yeah. you know uh they'll mummify cats dogs oh, good any household animals i think they have to be dead first what about I don't, plants I don't, uh, I mean, you know what? These people are mummifying people in 2022. I'm sure they'll mummify <laughs> anything for money. Nice. I uh, they you obviously have the Snickers bar. They obviously have no principles. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. 
Um, anyway, we do want to thank the following patrons for their kind donations, starting with a winner is me. And Norman. Dave Nelson. Space Bruce. STG the Mr. Guy. Zacob Zgella. Uh, Retronauts does adventure game episodes. I... Well, we're not Retronauts. <laughs> uh, Millie's homemade ice cream is the best ever. Burger Champ. And Harry Pry are all the patrons we want to thank for their kind donations. And we want to thank you, uh, potential future patron, for your potential future donation. <laughs> or for your potential future rating and reviewing of the show on anything. I don't know. I don't even read them anymore, but I know they help. <laughs> um, like, every now... I'll go check them, like, once every two or three months, because we only get one or two at a time. Yeah. And then you see that so, guy doesn't like Altered Beast still. If, so if you... If you <laughs> so mad <laughs> if you if you do leave a review tell me so i can go read it yes we don't we don't get a lot in so like i'd like to read them but i quit yes. checking it because it's like i don't we, we don't get very many right um so uh please let us know and you can join us in discord where we talk about um, everything all the time everything all of the time uh every day yeah constantly uh today i was talking about how some uh, co-worker of mine that i've never met that lives on another continent randomly sent me a, a gif of a baby dancing and then you doxed him. You told us all his <laughs> no, first I... name and said he lived in India. True. Yes. So anyone could go find him now. Yeah. Anyone could find that one guy with that very common name. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next week. And as always, let, let us, us cling, cling together. together.